All right, everybody, welcome to First Attack. I am James Chen, one half of the Ultra Chen duo. How's everybody going out there? Uh, let me know if everybody can hear me and see me all right. Um, in case you guys haven't seen a lot of First Attack episodes before, this is the series of videos where basically I try to teach people how to play Street Fighter from the most basic levels possible. I'm trying to help a lot of people uh, for beginner strats, but it also kind of delves into intermediate and, uh, oh, and get into a little bit more uh, complex stuff from time to time, but I definitely try my best to help the beginners as much as possible. Now, today's episode, I'm gonna be focusing on something that's, you know, for people who've been playing fighting games forever, feels rather intuitive now. But, um, you know, for people who are just getting into Street Fighter, it's, it, it's, it's a difficult task, actually, because what happens is you show up to a Street Fighter game, you start playing, and they give you six buttons. And there's all sorts of buttons that you can hit and lots of moves that you can do. And it's just, it gets to a point where, like, how do you even know what you're supposed to do? Like, how do you even know how to use these buttons and such? And again... For players who've played for a long time, this is kind of one of those things that, you know, we've taken them for granted because we've done this so many times that as soon as we see a move, we're like, oh, okay, I know what I can use this move for. So, what I'm going to do today is talk about how to look at your character's buttons, how to figure out what to use them for, uh, figure out what the categories for buttons are, like different qualities of buttons that you want to look for, things to rate and such, and, um... Look, when I'm doing this today, um, it's going to seem kind of, you know, if you're a beginner and you're watching this, you're going to go like, oh my god, there's so many different qualities and all these different, like, information and such. But honestly, a lot of it is intuitive. Again, no one taught a lot of us how to figure this out. These are just kind of things that we figured out as we went. So, um, you know, as time went on, it's just kind of these unwritten categories of moves that a lot of people have started to just understand what they're for. And so this is my attempt <laughs> to actually categorize, quantify, and you know show people exactly the category of moves that you have, in particular for a Street Fighter game. Now obviously if we go to a bunch of different games, there's going to be all sorts of different categories. All fighting games are different, but since this season I'm focusing mostly on Street Fighter V, I'm going to be focusing purely on moves that apply to Street Fighter V gameplay. For example, in other games like uh, more of the Arxis games, you know, jump cancel ability is a very important tactic, etc., etc. But um, for Street Fighter V, I'm just going to focus on that right now. So, <clears throat> in order to try to teach this to people, I'm going to, so last, last lesson that we did, I brought back one of my good old friends. And that good old friend was Mr. Whiteboard over here, you know, with the high level tech here. But no, no, no whiteboards today, no whiteboards today. But I am going to bring back uh, one of our old friends that I've used in first attack episodes in the past. And that is going to be... Do, do, do... Ha ah, ha, the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> we are going to be going with PowerPoint today because I have a lot of things, a lot of, you know, qualities about moves that I really, really want to talk about. So today we are going to be going with PowerPoint. That is right. You are in a business meeting. You are in a college class or something like that. <laughs> so get ready to learn through PowerPoint. All right, so here we go. The first thing, you know, as I mentioned today, is the topic is about finding uses for your buttons. So, for example, with Ryu here, I've got all these moves here. And so, like, how do you know what you want to do with all these different moves? Like, why? How do you know what's good? Like, you watch experts play, and you see Ryu players play. They use a lot of low forward all the time. Why do they use low forward? You'll see people go around and hit uh, standing strong a lot of the times in combos. Why are they using standing strong? That's not a combo. Why are they using standing strong all the time? You know, etc., etc. So, again, it's really interesting because before, um, right now, it's not as bad as it used to be. Every character only has about 20 moves, which is six buttons while you're standing, 
six buttons while you're crouching, six buttons while you're jumping, like so. And then most characters have about two, one, two, or three unique moves. Some of them have more than others. For example, with Ryu, he has the uh, overhead, which is towards and medium punch, and he also has the I'm sorry, the Collarbone Splitter, which is towards and medium punch, and the Solar Plexus Strike, which is toward and heavy punch. So that actually gives Ryu about 20 unique moves altogether. And, and as I said, most characters kind of have uh, about that much. So obviously every move serves a different purpose. You know, what, what are you trying to do with all these different moves? What is, what is the point? Like, how, Outside of watching top players play these characters, how do you yourself figure out what moves sh or should be your go-to moves that you see lots of players use? Like, how did they figure out what buttons? So, um, obviously, some moves are going to be more valuable than others. Okay, that's just going to be the way. So even though you have like 20 normal moves here, some of them you may not use a lot. Some of them you may not use practically ever. Like, especially for jump attacks, there may be some buttons that you just literally never use. And then some of them you are going to abuse the hell out of. You are going to use some buttons a lot. So, not all moves are created equal here, but you'd be surprised. Almost every button in this game does have a purpose. Does have a point. So again, how do you figure out which buttons to use? That is what we are going to talk about today. And to do that, I am going to classify basically 10 different move properties that in my opinion define the point of a move. Now, as I go through these properties, different moves are going to be stronger than others in these categories. So let's go through these for a little bit and I'll explain them a little bit, for example. So the very first quality that you're going to really want to pay attention is range. So obviously some moves, for example, like Ryu's standing heavy kick, hits pretty far away. My crouching heavy kick hits pretty far away as well. But then you see moves like standing light punch. And seriously, this is like, I mean, this might be one of the saddest looking standing light punches that I've seen pretty much in any fighting game. Because like, I mean, dude, there is just no range on this at all. So range will definitely be a huge factor in your moves. And I'm not only talking about just a vertical, I mean horizontal range either. I'm also talking about vertical range as well. So for example, if I'm crouching and hitting medium kick, you can see that it's only hitting down here. But if I hit crouch heavy punch, it hits way up there. At least it looks like it hits way up there. Let's find out. Um, boom, there you go. So it hits way up there. So range can quantify both in vertical, horizontal, and even diagonal, like this, like the standing heavy kick, which has great range in both directions. So what else besides range is important to evaluate when you see a move? So as soon as you start messing with your character's moves, what else do you want to evaluate? Speed. Speed is an obvious one. This is startup speed that we're talking about here. Obviously, with light attacks, like light punch and light kick, versus heavy punch and heavy kick, startup speed is going to vary drastically. And in most cases, that's going to be how it is. Light attacks are going to start up much faster than heavier attacks. So, for example, the startup of my standing light punch, which has this really sad range, but it's a really fast move. It has a three frame startup. And if you guys remember from last week's episode, um, startup is how long it takes for your move to hit. And even though three frames, which is basically 1 20th of a second, doesn't sound that much different than six frame startup, which is 1 10th of a second. In terms of fighting games, it's, it's a world of difference. It's, it's a huge amount of difference, even though it's just fractions of a second. So startup, light attacks have a very quick startup. Heavy attacks, you can see, generally take a while before they hit. You can actually see Ryu animate a bunch before the kick actually connects. So keep in mind the speed at which your moves come out because some moves, like this move here, take forever to come out. Like you can see they take a while. This one also takes a lot longer to hit than a lot of other moves. 
So again, you're going to be asking yourself, why would I ever want to use these moves? Well, there are definitely lots of reasons, and we will get into that. Now, speed also has to do with how quickly your moves end. Uh, again, from the frames episode that we did last week, there's our startup frames, there are active frames, and then there are recovery frames. So this is in particular about the recovery frames. So let's talk about, for example, this low medium kick. Although the low medium kick for Ryu starts up pretty fast, maybe starts up a little bit slower than the stand medium punch, the nice thing about stand medium punch is that it, it actually recovers much quicker than my crouch medium kick. You can see that after you know Ryu fully stretches his legs, he kind of freezes with his leg out there and then he slowly pulls it back. But the standing medium punch, after he finishes punching, he kind of retracts his arm pretty quickly. You can see this even more, for example, off of my crouching heavy kick. You can see after I kick him, you see how long it takes for it to swing back around? So again, safety is how I want to describe this factor. Although it's speed, just like startup, but in this case, you more want to interpret it in terms of safety. And this comes from if, you're, if your opponent blocks the move or if you just completely whiff the move. Safety is a very important factor uh, when trying to categorize your moves. So the next thing that you probably want to use to evaluate your normal moves is going to be priority. This one's a little bit harder to explain. Um, there's always been this concept of priority that people have talked about before. And, uh, and I don't mean the priority system in this game, which means that, um, you know, if, if I do heavy attack and light attack, that my heavy attack is going to just beat the... Like, we're supposed to trade. In Street Fighter 4, this would have been a trade, but in this game, Ryu wins because of the priority system. Unfortunately, there's also been this term known as priority that people have used a lot of times uh, in fighting games. And um, there's never really been a way to quantify it. People have always said, this move has high priority. This move has a lot of priority. This move has crappy priority. The way that I decide that I figured the best way to describe priority in this instance is hitbox versus hurtbox. So the hitbox is where your move can hit. In general, for example, this move here, my hitbox is going to be right where my foot that's stretching out is going to be. Hurtbox is where you can get hit. So I can hit this button all day, but if Kami hits, comes up and hits standing medium kick, like that, she can kick me in the face. So my face has a hurt box because that's where I can be kicked, but my foot has a hit box and that's where it can hit. In general, the moves with the best priority are ones with less hurt box. I'm um, yeah, less hurt box and more hit box. When you actually see frame data graphics and um uh I don't want to bring them up right now because it's I just don't want to overload people with too much information but just in general understand that uh, this is kind of one of those things that you have to figure out through experimentation this is not one that you're gonna look and see oh this move has good range I can understand where to use it for ranged moves priority is something that you experiment with the reason why I have Ryu here is because standing medium kick for example great priority move here it's it's, it's, for some reason, it's really hard to hit this move for a lot of characters. Well, Kami standing medium kick is a ridiculously good move, so I'm probably using a bad button here as an example. But uh, Ryu standing medium kick generally has decent priority, but not today. Jeez. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. So it tends to beat a lot of buttons out there. And uh, you'll see a lot of players kind of stick this button out like this while they're walking around. And the reason why for that is that it has decent priority. Uh, other good moves with good example of priority are uh, Rashid's standing light kick, which I have been told has really, really great priority. Um, another great move for priority is Chun-Li's back and heavy punch, the, the double palm strike. That move seems to have ridiculous priority for some strange reason. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, Ryu's standing medium kick tends to have decent priority. K 
Cammy's normal buttons are really super good as well, so maybe she wasn't a great character to use as a counter example against Ryu for this. Uh, let me see if I can find a better button here. Yeah, see, here we go. If Cammy's fishing with Crouch Strong, she's just going to get beat up. And you can see why it has decent priority. See that space right under Ryu's foot? There's nothing to hit there. So the nice thing about this is when you throw this move out, it's actually harder to hit for a lot of characters unless they have something like Cammy with this standing medium kick that has ridiculous range, for example. Oh, okay, now that I'm trying to show Cammy's ridiculous range, I'm having trouble. <laughs> All right, fine, game. Do exactly the opposite of what I want to show you every time. That's fine. But that's basically what uh, priority is. The next thing that you want to talk about is strength. So obviously if I go over here and I turn on attack data, let me turn off stun at the same time. Oh, I can't because he's human, that's right. Because I don't know why they don't let you turn off stun when you set them to human. But um, damage is obviously a huge factor as well. So for example, standing light punch here, which I said is really fast. If you look at the very top right corner of the screen, I don't know if you can see it on such low resolution, but it does 30 damage. It's not a lot of damage. However, my standing heavy kick, 90 damage. Three times as much damage. And you'll find that in this game, in general, that's kind of the way that the moves are partitioned out. It's 30 for light attacks, 60 for medium attacks, and 90 for heavy attacks. Now obviously it's going to vary based off of the move, and if you're Zangief, then your heavy attacks are generally going to do more than that. They're going to do, for example, 100 damage, and your lights might do 40 or so. But that's generally how it works. It's usually 30 for lights, around 60 for mediums, and around 90 to 100 for heavy attacks. So for example, my crouch heavy kick is 100 damage. My crouching heavy punch, 90 damage. And uh, my standing heavy punch, 90 damage. So there you go. Strength, another way to evaluate your moves. Hit confirmability is a more intermediate level concept, but this is something that actually becomes very important later on for finding out what moves you want. And again, I'm only talking about the things that you should be evaluating right now. A lot of you are probably like James. James, show me examples. Show me examples of where these come into play. Don't worry, I got you. I got you. That's exactly what this entire episode is about. I will be showing you concrete examples all day. Just telling you right now exactly what's going on here. So again, hit confirmability. So hit confirms in this game basically are the ability to hit the opponent and if they block, you can transition into a decent pressure game. But if it hits, you can convert into damage. So for example, Ryu standing medium punch. It's a good hit confirm button because if I hit Kami, I know I can confirm into a good damage combo. So hit confirmability, very, very important. And while this has to do with combos, interestingly enough, whether or not a move can be buffered is a, a completely different quality. So again, hit confirmability refers to links and the ability to, with your own human reaction, change to whether or not you're applying pressure or trying to finish into a combo. Combo ability is basically the ability to cancel moves. For example, Ryu's crouching light kick, very fast move, good for in close range, cannot be canceled into anything. And in fact, most characters in this game, this seems to be a universal rule they applied in this game, most characters can't cancel their crouching light kick. And they did this for a reason, because they're trying to balance out the quality of moves. Some characters like Karen, have cancelable crouch light kicks, good on her, but uh, a lot of characters do not have crou cancelable crouch light kicks. But uh, for example, reuse crouching medium kick is cancelable, standing medium punch is cancelable, but remember that standing medium kick that I talked to you about, that has good priority, cannot be cancelled. I cannot ch cancel this into a fireball, I cannot cancel this into a hurricane, but if I switch to standing medium punch, suddenly I can. So whether or not a move can be canceled into a special move, very, very important factor when it comes to evaluating moves. Block level. This should be pretty clear. Um, but again, 
if you come from, um, you know, it's not, again, it's tough for me because I always say these things like, oh, this should be super obvious, but look, I've been playing fighting games for 20 plus years, so if, yeah, I, I need to refrain from saying that. Basically, block level is that there are different ways to block in this game. There's crouch blocking and there's stand blocking. Uh, get over here, Cammy. Stand blocking, right? Some moves cannot be blocked standing, like my crouching medium kick. Some moves cannot be blocked high, like my collarbone splitter, my towards and medium punch. This has to be blocked high. So you have to stand up and block this move here. So there you go. Um, yeah, someone did mention that you can cancel this into a V trigger, but that's for V trigger lessons, okay? L let's not even talk about it, because V trigger is a very valuable resource. It's like a one or two times around resource. So it's not something that you want to use necessarily to evaluate whether or not the, the, the move is useful in all sorts of situations. Cancel ability into special moves is a, is a fundamental... It's like, basically, if Street Fighter 2 did not have this ability, Street Fighter 2 would have been boring and a very unsuccessful game. But the fact that people found out that these cancels existed really turned the game into another thing, and it's really when the game opened up. So, But anyways, back to block level. Again, knowing whether or not your move, your move hits people if they try to stand block, for example, like so, or if they try to low block, like so, or even with jump attacks which will always hit crouchers. Very, very important thing to know. Block level is very important. Resulting opponent state. <laughs> what does this mean? Usually this basically means does it knock the opponent down or not, right? So for example, this move knocks her to the ground. So this move is classified as a knockdown or in this particular case, uh, a sweep, right? Um, for example, my standing heavy kick, all my other buttons leave her standing. So the resulting opponent state is that they're standing, right? Uh, Ryu has a target combo, and you can see that the end of that knocks them down. So knowing what your opponent's state is going to be after you hit them with this move is actually a very important thing. And this is why sweeps are so valuable. You'll notice one thing about this game, sweeps generally have really good range and generally are one of the only ways to knock an opponent down but you'll also notice that going back to the factors that we saw above number three safety sweeps are one of the least safe moves in this game it's a trade-off between the ability to knock the opponent down and whether or not they're completely safe or not of course the reason why i i just list this as whether or not it knocks down or not is because Different moves have different weird properties. I don't know, you know, so this one knocks them down right away. But there are such things as moves that launch people, for example, uh, like Cammy's back medium punch heavy kick. You can see how it pops them up a little bit higher, which allows me to do uh, canceled into combos, for example. So there are launch states, there are, uh, in terms of crush counters, there's crumples and all sorts of different uh, uh, resulting states. But the reason why I've listed down at the bottom is one of the lesser, lesser important factors. And the last thing I want to talk about is extra properties, okay? Um, a lot of moves have all sorts of crazy extra properties. So for example, um, there are moves that have armor. So, for example, Zangief's back and heavy punch. If you hold it and he reels back like this, while he's holding back, if you hit him, he gets armored. Uh, there are some moves that are considered things like low crush. So what's a low crush? For example, uh, Kami's towards... Uh, not Kami. I've disproved that already. It, it's not a low crush. Chun-Li's towards and roundhouse, where she hops and does the little swingy kick, is a low crush. So if I do a crouching medium kick with Ryu, she can't be hit low when Chun-Li does that move and it'll go over my leg and hit me. So that's kind of a low crush um, property for the move has. Another one is movement. So some moves, most moves if you notice when I do the move, I end up exactly where I am. All right, fine, everyone, just, someone told me just put the joystick on the table, fine. I'll do that, let me move Dan a little bit. 
further closer. All right, so here we go. Um, <laughs> some move, most moves when you do the move will generally keep you exactly where you're at. However, some moves will move you forward. And this is actually really important as well. And you'll see this later on. This will become very important in footsies games. So there you go. These are the 10, in my opinion, most important move properties. Once again, the TLDR, range, how far your move hits, whether vertical or horizontal, speed, how quickly they hit, safety, which is how fast they recover. So for example, this move recovers very fast. Priority, moves that are harder to hit, have smaller hurt boxes and uh, better hit boxes. Strength, which is just purely damage. Hit confirmability, which allows you to perform link combos so that you can react to whether your opponent gets hit or whether they block. So you can take advantage of either situation. Combo ability, which is the ability to be canceled into special moves. For example, Ryu standing light kick. Like if standing, Ryu standing light kick wasn't cancelable, it actually wouldn't be as good as it is. But it's really good because it can be cancelled. So cancel ability is another one. Block level, which is whether it hits high or low, or low and high in the examples that I just gave, low and high. The resulting opponent state, if they're still standing, or if you knock them down. And extra properties such as armor, movement, you know, invincibility to lows, etc, etc. Uh, there's a lot of normal moves that have interesting, unique properties, and so that will definitely affect uh, what you actually want to do with moves and where you want to use them. So, that's how I'm going to evaluate all the kind of moves that I'm going to use when I play a Street Fighter game. As soon as I come in here and the very first time I play a character that I never played before, I just start hitting the buttons. You know, I'm just like, okay, okay, so this move looks like it has decent range, okay. This move, oh, look at this, has decent range. You know, I'll figure these things out. Okay, this is a powerful punch, but can I cancel it into anything? I can't cancel it into anything, okay. Uh, but low heavy punch I can cancel, okay. Okay, this is a knockdown, etc. So you just kind of do this general evaluation of moves and you can automatically figure out where to use them. Now, again, the advantage is I've been playing fighting games for a very long time, so of course I'll know where to use these moves. So, what are the different places that you are going to use these moves? What are the categories of moves that you will be applying these ratings to? So let's talk about the categories of moves. Now, I've been ignoring jumping attacks here because jumping attacks kind of fall into their own whole different ecosystem, which is why it's kind of nice. In this game, there's only really um, 12 moves on the ground that you want to pay attention to with a couple of unique moves. In older games, you had significantly more moves to think about a lot of the times, which is kind of what made it harder. In an attempt to simplify the game a lot, they made it so that no matter how close you are to the opponent, you'll always do the same move. So even this move here, which reaches really far, same move when you're close up. Oh, that's right, Ryu has a third unique move, which is this axe kick here, which is two hits, you can see. Okay, so here we go. What are the different normal move uh, categories that you actually have? First one we're going to look at here is... This is the standard right here, pokes. Pokes are very... Uh, you know what? Let me just list them all, and then I'll go into them. Pokes are uh, one category of moves that you're going to be relying on a lot. Space controllers are another one. This one sounds weird. Poke sounds kind of obviously it's obvious what it is. Space controller? What in, what in heaven's name is a space controller, right? With punishers. These are, um, again, I'll talk about all these moves one by one, but this is another category of moves that are, you're going to end up using. Uh, whoops, where did my number four go? My number four is gone. Hang on a second, my PowerPoints. Ah, it'll probably show up in a little bit. Uh, fifth category, the mysterious fourth category are Mike Ross buttons. The fifth category are um, counter pokes. So counter pokes, um, 
yeah, again, like I said, I keep trying to go into explanations, but I'm going to save that. Counterpokes is another category. Anti-airs is another one. Ah, there we go. Pressure tools. Number four are pressure tools. So these are very important uh, weapons for in close combat. Uh, six are anti-airs. Seven are big punishers. Big punishers. Eighth category are combo moves. And the last category are fakes. And I've really kind of listed them in their importance. Um, uh, sort of in their importance. The first ones start mostly with footsie tools. Then I get into the close-up tools. And then basically, so one, two, and three are the footsie tools. Those are the super important footsie tools. Four and five are the very important uh, up-close tools. So when I talk about footsies, I'm going to be talking about this range right here. This is the range that footsies kind of takes place in. This is footsies, this is footsies, this can be footsies, this is mostly footsies. So that's categories one through three. Categories four through five is this range right here, where two people are on the ground or they're right next to each other face to face. Anti-airs, big anti-airs are for countering jump attacks or airborne moves. Big punishers and combo moves are for damage. These are combo moves. These are specifically for use in combos. And fakes are just a completely miscellaneous category that I have separated from everything else. Okay, so now that we know what the categories are, let us get into each one of the categories one by one so I can show you where they're useful for and how the move evaluation applies to all the different moves.